Hello friends, welcome to the channel Physics by Ideas. In this video lecture, we shall learn about very important technique to find out the electric field potential of certain charge configuration. And this method is called electric image method. The lecture may be long, the longer duration, but I request you to watch this whole video. So friends, if you are preparing NET, GATE, JAM, TI for like examination, as this channel is ideal for you, and we have very eco-friendly student scheme, that is test series schemes, are only for the students, and huge discount is here, that is the five test, the full length test is only cost rupees 249, and the topic wise test costs only 549, and if you take the combined, series that is 15 test and only cost 699 only also we have interview guidance for those i shall tell you all the information at the end of this lecture let us start this lecture first this is very important topic for your upcoming entrances in physical physical science also so the references are the np10 reference lecture note griffith electrodynamics book and another note that is link is given so first of all why should we read this chapter okay so there is a class of electrostatic problems with boundary condition that appear to be difficult to satisfy if the laplace equation is to solve directly in the previous lecture we have learned how to solve the laplace equation i have given you all the details about the cartesian coordinate system similarly you can find out for the polar coordinate system also and we usually find out laplace equation to find out the potential but for, however the boundary condition is so much difficult that you cannot satisfy you cannot solve that laplace equation by that potential okay so what you have to do so the condition on the bounding surfaces in these problems can be set up by appropriate image charge and then the potential distribution can be determined in straightforward manner okay so first of all you should know about a beautiful theorem that is uniqueness theorem and this uniqueness theorem is for the Poisson equation that states that for a large class of boundary condition, the equation may have many solutions, okay? But the gradient of every solution is the same. And in the case of electrostatics, this means that there is a unique electric field derived from a potential function satisfying Poisson equation under the boundary condition. What is the simple meaning of this theorem? That is, a solution of Poisson equation that satisfies the given boundary condition is an unique solution, okay? A solution of an electrostatic problem satisfying its boundary condition is the only possible solution. And the method of image that is, field E is uniquely defined by its normal components over the surface which confines the region. So, there exists a only solution or a unique solution which satisfies the Poisson equation for this given boundary conditions. And what kind of boundary conditions there may be? So, first you should know there can be boundary condition like different that is Dirichlet boundary condition, Newman boundary conditions. Okay, uh, so you will learn it. Uh, uh, with the particular specified problems, the boundary con condition will be specified. So, for the method of images, what you have to do, this is a short note that is replace the original boundary by appropriate image charges in lieu of formal solution of Maxwell or Laplace equation. So, image charges actually, they are virtual charges, okay. Use image charges to set up the boundary condition. The image charge should be located outside the region in which the field is to be determined. Now, what kind of boundary conditions? Suppose the Laplace equation here is given as the for the Cartesian coordinate system that is del 2 v del x2 plus del 2 v del y2 plus del 2 v del z2. So the boundary conditions are for this specified problem that is there is a charge plus q and this is the conducting plane. So the boundary condition for this particular problem is v at 0 y z is 0 that is potential on this conducting surface is zero 
now as r tends to zero that is the distance between the charge and this plane conducting plane is zero then v becomes q by 4 pi epsilon naught r as v tends to zero v tends to zero potential becomes zero as r tends to infinite when this charge q is far distance from this conducting potential uh, from this grounded co conductor now another condition that is v x y z equals to v of a comma minus y minus z this is the inversion and v of x y z equals to v of x y minus z so first of all we have learned that this method of image actually is an intuitive method suppose you are in front of the mirror okay you can show you can see your image you we can actually find out uh, by the optical optics that uh, optical geometry consideration that the distance from the mirror to real person is equals to distance from the mirror to the virtual person okay so the image distance is the object distance for the mirror case so you know that it can be determined or it can be proved from geometry but can you really find out or can you really go to that image person no you cannot so similarly this that method is an in this method is also an intuitive method and with some example we will learn and at the end we shall solve many problems also so first of all suppose this is an infinite grounded conducting plane and it occupying a uh, plane x y okay now a charge q is located at a distance d so this is the charge q which is located at a distance d from this infinitely grounded conducting plane and this charge q is taken along the z direction so distance from the plane to charge q is along z direction is amount of d so we are required to obtain an expression for the potential everywhere in the region z greater than zero excepting of of course at the location of the charge itself so at the location we are we know that the potential is q by 4 pi epsilon naught r so we are not considering this particular location but without other locations we want to find out the potential so let us look at the potential at the point p okay suppose we are taking this point of observation as p which is at a distance of r1 from this charge that is real charge that is q so this is indicated by this red circle in the figure now suppose instead of solving the problem from the first principle let us suppose there is an image charge q prime at a distance d below the plane so if this is our plane and we are taking another charge that is image charge and which is below the plane and at a distance d double prime and the charge is q prime okay we will find out how much is of what is the uh, value magnitude of the q we will find out and what is the value of d prime also we shall find out so this is the very similar to the image of an object which i have already told you okay so the in the same the image charge is located at a virtual distance and the charge itself is fictitious let the point p be at a distance r2 from the image charge so the point of observation p this is our point of observation the distance between the image charge and the point of observation is suppose r2 and distance of the of, uh, actual charge to our point of observation is r1 okay so we take the origin on the plane as shown so we are taking this origin at on the plane so this co coordinate let me take the color here this is origin origin this is origin okay so this is 0 0 and then you have to find out this is along um, uh, z this is along x this is x this is y and this is z okay so let us uh, erase this otherwise so so come to the point that the potential q phi 1 that is at point p is due to the real charge q uh, that is and due to the imaginary charge q prime okay so q to p can be written as q 
q1 uh, phi1 that is for the real charge that is q by 4 pi epsilon naught r1 since the distance between them is r1 and phi2 that is due to the image charge is q prime by 4 pi epsilon naught r2 now look here what will be the r1 and what will be the r2 so we have taken x y z so along z we have taken the charge is at a real distance plus q and at a d prime distance that is minus q okay uh, not minus q that is now it is q prime so uh, the z coordinate will be only change so for the plus q charge the z coordinate will be z minus t and for the virtual charge that is real charge the z coordinate will be z plus d prime because the distance between them is minus d prime so q prime uh, phi 1 equals to q by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by root over x square plus y square plus z minus d whole square and phi 2 equals to q prime by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by root over x square plus y square plus z plus d prime whole square. So this phi p that is the combination of phi 1 and phi 2 using the superposition principle and they also satisfy the Laplace's equation at uh, and now uh, this can be written as the del square 1 by r1 can be written as minus 4 pi delta cube r1 and del square 1 by r2 can be written as minus 4 pi delta cube r2 and at a point neither of the distances is 0 so that the delta function vanishes okay so we must have this on this plane that is the plane is the potential is 0 that is phi 1 should be equally opposite to phi 2 that is phi 1 equals to minus of phi 2 this is our first boundary condition that is potential on the surface that is planar surface should be 0 and this distances are positive the charges q and q prime must have opposite sign so at this if we consider for z equals to 0 we get the potential due to the positive charge or real charge is equals to potential due to the image charge that is q square into x square plus y square into plus d prime square equals to q prime square x square plus y square plus d prime d square so we will get this equation and this equation must be satisfied at all points on the conducting plane so for any arbitrary value of x y and if we find out we will find out that the image charge q prime is equals to minus q and the image distance is d prime equals to d so q prime equals to minus q means image charge is exactly an opposite to the real charge and the d that is distance is exactly the it is like a opposite it is an uh, the, if this is a mirror and suppose an object which is standing in front of the mirror and his image will also its image will also be formed uh, at a same, same distance behind the mirror so suppose with this analogy we can say that if there is a charge plus q and if this is a conducting sphere or sorry conducting plane or conductor or it can be act as a mirror for this particular charge and it will produce a negative charge with the exact same amount with the same distance behind that conductor or behind that plane okay so thus the image charge is equal and opposite to the object charge and like in the case of optical images the image distance is equal to the object distance hopefully you will understand you have understood now there is a very important point that is if it is important to realize that the field which is the electric field exists only in the region above the conducting plane okay don't consider the field for that image charge the expression for potential which satisfies the Laplace's equation everywhere above the plane and also satisfies the boundary condition on the plane. So the consideration that is the boundary condition or that is the field, this is only due to that real charge, not due to that imaginary charge on that conducting plane. So suppose that we are taking, we are kind of find out the potential phi of P. So it should be the combination of the real charge and that imaginary charge. So if we find uh, write rho square as x square plus y square, so we can write phi at P equals to q by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by root over rho square plus z minus d whole square. This is for plus q or real charge minus 1 by root over rho square plus z plus d whole square. This is due to the imaginary charge okay as q is minus q so this is the minus sign now what will be the electric field that is uh, the due to this charge configuration so electric field is 
E equals to minus grad phi. That is the negative of the gradient of potential. So you can write minus, minus grad phi as minus rho cap into del del rho minus k cap into del del z phi of rho z. Okay. So this can be written as q by 4 pi epsilon naught rho cap in, divided by rho square plus z minus d whole square to the power 3 by 2 minus rho divided by rho square plus z plus d whole square to the power 3 by 2 plus k cap z minus d by rho square plus d, z minus d whole square to the power 3 by 2 minus z plus d divided by rho square plus z plus d whole square to the power 3 by 2. Now you have to consider, I have said that you have to consider the rho or the charge that is the real charge q. You don't have to consider the imaginary one. So you are considering this expression for z greater than 0. Okay. So now we will find out what will be the induced charge that is q induced on that conducting plane due to the real charge that will become rho in sigma induced equals to epsilon naught into ez at z equals to 0 so it will become 1 by 4 pi minus 2 ad divided by rho square plus d square whole to the power 3 by 2 and that q that is the charge induced equals to integration over sigma dx dy or sigma ds that will become minus q. So the plus q charge has induced a charge of minus q to that plane, conducting plane. So that the total induced charge has same magnitude as the real charge, though of opposite side. In the following figure, we have plotted the charge density as a function of x, y coordinate uh, on the plane for some representative distances of the. So what we have done here, we have done the above problem we have replaced the original problem of a charge and a conducting plane by a charge and an image charge and eliminated the conducting plane altogether okay so the solution obtained satisfies the boundary condition at z equals to zero the potential is zero the solution does not make sense in the region but that is immaterial because we did not seek the solution in that region in any case we are wanting the solution above the plane not the behind the plane so the object and image charges being equidistant from a point on the conducting plane, the horizontal components are cancelling only the vertical components are existing. And this uniqueness theorem guarantees this is the only possible solution. So if we plot the lines of force, okay, and the potential surfaces, this is the electric lines of force and the circular lines are actually the equipotential surfaces. So this figure shows the lines of force and equipotentials and the four lines of force strike the conducting plane normally and the equipotentials are these spheres. Okay. Whatever we have found, can we mathematically show it that the image charge is actually uh, uh, the same as the induced charge which has created, which has been created on the plane conducting sphere yes we can show it look here uh, suppose we we are finding out or we are going to find out the electric field at a point 0 comma d due to this induced charge that is induced on the plane conductor so it will become e equals to minus k cap into 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by 4 d square this will become the electric field and the force that is f equals to q into e it will become minus k cap into 4 q square by 4 pi epsilon naught into 1 by 4 d square now look here this is our infinite conductor and from this conductor the charge q that is real charge at a distance of plus d and the imaginary charge is at a distance of minus d now what will be the distance between them that is d plus d that is 2d so if this induced charge is not there but only the image charge is here at a distance 2d from this q so it will also give a force that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by 2d whole square that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by 4 d square and this will be along the z direction okay so and minus q is due to its negative charge so uh, that is 
uh, the same so we can write this the force on the charge due to the charges induced on the surface of the conductor which is same as the force exerted by the image charge on the real charge which is located at a distance 2d from each other so the force uh, here we can also find out the work done okay so work done that is the electrostatic force is the conservative force so we bring the charge along the z axis the work done is w equals to integration over infinite to d q square by 16 pi epsilon naught z square dz okay so it will become minus q square by 16 pi epsilon naught d that is the force exerted on the surface is fz equals to q square by 16 pi epsilon naught d square so suppose we are taking an example consider two semi-infinite grounded conducting planes intersecting along the z direction or z axis which is taken out of the plane of paper which is the xy plane a charge q is located at a point calculate the force on the charge q due to the charges induced on the surfaces of the planes so here this is the two conducting sphere uh, two conductors that is planar conductors and there is a power charge plus q and you have to calculate the force on this charge plus q due to the charges that are induced on these surfaces of the plates so first of all you have to take the image charges like how do you understand what will be the image charges look here you have to satisfy the boundary conditions everywhere so plus q is here so it will induce a charge minus q plus q is here so it will another induce another charge minus q now this minus q will induce a charge plus q and this minus q will induce a charge plus q so this is the configuration and the distance between them are same so the force that is the component of the forces that is due to this total combination of charges that is q square by 4 pi epsilon naught minus 1 by 4 a square plus 1 by 4 a square plus b square cos theta and fy component that is the this is the x component this is the y component that is q square by 4 epsilon naught into minus 1 by 4 a square plus b by 4 a square plus b square whole to the power 3 by 2 so charge q and the next question is a charge q is located at z equals to d and a second charge minus 2q is located at z equals to 2d above an infinite rounded conducting plane occupying the xy plane at x equals to 0 now calculate the charge uh, force exerted on the charge plus q so the charge q and the charge minus 2q will give rise to two images the plus q charge will give a charge located at a distance d below the plane and minus 2q charge will give uh, an image that is plus 2q at a distance 2d below the plane so the force that is on the charge small q that is due to combination of these charges that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2q square divided by d square minus q square by 4d square plus 2q square by 9d square equals to 71q square by 144 pi epsilon naught d square so do you understand how do you get these charges so just you find out the location of the charge then you find out how what are charges then you find out the distance between the point of observation or the charge which you want to know how much force is acting on the charge and the distance between that particular image charge which is also created so if you know the distance between them you just simply apply coulomb's law and you will get the force in this problem it is given as a point charge q is located at a distance d above a grounded infinite conducting plane a second charge that is minus q is free to move along the perpendicular from the position of the charge q on the plane where should this charge minus q be placed so that the net force on it is zero so we have to consider the net force on minus q charge should be zero so first of all we take this minus q charge at a distance x small x from this uh, conducting plane so you have to come up if consider the all this charge configuration 1 3 4 so what are this 3 and 4 charge so if there is a positive charge at a distance of d from this infinite plane 
there will be also an image charge that is negative charge which will be behind the plane and the distance will be d and here as we consider a charge that is minus q at a distance x so it will induce or it will give, uh, give another image charge which is same distance below the plane that is x and opposite sign that is plus q so we have to consider here these one three four charges but three and four are the image charges and the force due to these three charges on this minus q charge and the total force should be equals to zero okay so consider let us take q into q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught common here q into minus q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught common okay so i am not taking this term inside this uh, in this bracket so we can write the distance term that is 1 by d minus x whole square for where the distance is d minus x for charge 1 and 2 another is minus 1 by 4x square where we have taken the distance between the charges 2 and 3 and another term it is 1 by d plus x whole square where we have taken the charges 2 and 4 okay so and taking this all forces that is equals to 0 so the x that is simplification we get x that is distance of minus q charge that is minus 3.4 d hopefully you understand okay what i uh, i am here going to talk, tell you that you have to consider first the image charges then find out the distance between them and if you find out the distance between them properly you can find out the coulomb forces and after finding out the coulomb forces as the net force is zero so you will find out the distance okay so, it's another question, a point charge Q of mass M is released, raised at a distance G from an infinite grounded conducting plane and find the time taken by this charge to hit the plane. So, when the charge Q is at a distance X from the plate, the force on it due to the conducting plane is given by the force between Q and its image charge minus Q that is located at minus X. We have already learned it so the equation of motion that is m into acceleration that is d2 dx2 d2x dt2 is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q into minus q divided by 2x square so multiplying both sides by 2 into dx dt we get m d2 dx dt whole square equals to minus q by 8 pi epsilon naught integration dx by x square which will get q square by 4 8 pi epsilon naught into 1 by x plus c but c is constant okay so here the acceleration is going or the force on the uh, is acting on the real charge that is due to the induced charge or image charge so after simplifying we get that uh, t that is required time as pi by q root over 2 pi epsilon naught m dq okay Thank you friends. Thank you for watching this video. I think this video will be helpful for you. In the next lecture, we shall learn more about the image charges and we shall learn more problems that has already come in the previous year papers. So the full length tests are already activated. Subject wise tests are activated in our portal. You can only on also get the free test if you register our portal and if you get some idea that how we arrange this test and the tests are totally computer based and also we can guide you for the interview so the packages are costing only 699 rupees for one year and those who have already joined to our test series it will cost only 500 rupees for them so thank you thank you friends for watching this video please contact us on telegram for more information thank you